Meantime, I want to give you an example of how the leftist media build their case to get what they want out of a government. Now, the huge majority of people who pay the most tax in this country are a very small number of people who earn over $180,000. If you're lucky enough to work hard, to have the skills, to have the right job to earn that, congrats. But our system says if you earn over 180 grand, government takes half. Those people pay more than half of all of the tax anywhere, everywhere. While the truth is that more than half of all households in the country take from the federal government more than they put in. So the idea, yes, of a 1%, 2 3% tax cut for people over $180,000 is a lot more money than a 1%, 2 3% tax cut for people who earn under, say, $80,000. But, of course, the logic is that if those people are able to hold on to more of their own money, they will spend it. They don't put it in the mattress. They spend it, which keeps the economy going, which helps our economy, which employs more people. They might, God forbid want to do some renovations which will hire tradies to do so. But you see, lefties don't like it. Lefties don't like it, so you have the Greens and the unions and a lot of people who think anyone who earns over $180,000 must be some sort of a criminal. And of course they were able to conclude that because many of the people who have a job that pays you more than $180,000, many of these people are blokes, somehow it's sexist to have a tax cut for people who already pay the majority of tax in the country. Half of more than $180,000. And I get it. That's a big number, especially the people while we were talking about at the start of the show buying meat in bulk. I'm across both ends of this spectrum here. But this is what they do. They first want to, because they don't like the tax cuts, they turn around and say, they write a report, oh, there's more blokes than Sheila's earning $180,000, bang, gender, okay? So we'll come at them from that direction. And then we'll write an editorial based off the serious choices that the government has to make based off our own reporting. And then we'll inflate the numbers to make it seem like there's a huge amount of money that is going to be robbed from the Australian government by people being able to spend their own money, which, of course, attracts a GST, which means it comes back to the government anyway. But... Details, details. We're trying to make a point here. This was in the editorial of the Sydney Morning Herald. News that the final tranche of tax cuts increase will increase gender inequality. News, by the way, which is in their own paper, and cost $240 billion over a decade. Bum, bum, bum. Well, of course, that has led to reactionary politicians like Jackie Lambie, who voted for these tax cuts. And you know how she voted for these tax cuts? Because the former government agreed to wipe the state of Tasmania's public housing debt. That was the deal to pass the tax cuts. But now it feels a little bit different. Guess which way the crazy cat lady's going? When I uh, made that deal at the time and also made it very clear in the chamber that if things changed economically, I mean, I couldn't see... I don't have a crystal ball, mate. I couldn't see five years ahead. But if something terrible happened, if our economy went backwards and we couldn't afford these stage three tax cuts, um, then they had to go. It's as simple as that. And right now, what I'm seeing out there on the streets, mate, with the homelessness, our public hospital system, our public schools... Mate, we've got, you know, an NDIS that's going to cost a fortune. We have aged care, 16 to $20 billion worth of tax cuts a year, mate. That's a lot of billions of dollars that we could be putting in those, into those lower sectors. That's a lot of billions of dollars. And despite the fact that I voted for it and did a deal that cost many, many millions of dollars from the very same taxpayers that would be getting the tax cut, screw you. What a classy way to do a deal, huh? Reminds you a bit of the New South Wales government when it comes to stadium upgrades. But anyone can play this game where you take a number that is $24 billion a year, times it by 10 and go, $240 billion. Because have a look at this. If you actually think about this, there is a policy that this federal government has to rob the federal budget of hundreds of billions of dollars worth of revenue. Yet it's one that's cheered on by the lefties, so therefore they don't use this tactic. But let me use their tactic of multiply everything times 10 and tell you a quick story. In Australia, each and every year, $21 billion worth of fuel taxes are collected. Petrol, excise, other fuel taxes, and of course, diesel. Times that by 10 years, it's $216 billion. 
which presumably, if everyone was driving an electric car, no one would be paying. So what is their logic for that policy that robs the budget of $200 billion over 10 years? Oh, nothing. We agree with that one. Versus the people who already pay the majority of tax in the country getting a little bit of their own money back to then spend in the economy and get taxes back through the GST. That's how the left plays.